Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. For most people, they're looking to earn for their families. And their families are usually people who they've chosen to be in their life after they've literally flown the nest, gone off in the world, and made a living. When they've gone off into the world to make a living, they have lived away from their biological families. They certainly have left their parents long gone. Sometimes parents live into old age and they have a marvelous life until they become someone invalid. And often invalidity comes about because of stupidity. That at the time when a person really should be using a walker just to steady themselves and to catch them if they start to slip because they could slip to their knees if they're still hanging on to something and then they won't bonk their nose on the floor or do something like that. It also keeps other people from accidentally or purposefully tri tripping them. You see, a person who's trying to get rid of someone can do things to someone. And I don't like talking about the truth of the world, but we do have ugliness, illness, and evil in the world. People who are evil are always pretending they're not doing things to other people when in fact they have already betrayed them, they have disobeyed them in some cases, meaning there are rules of a relationship. And the rules of a relationship are usually established in those first few moments of that relationship of what's the relationship going to be about, what is its purpose, and how can it proceed at the present moment of time. It is absolute truth that over the course of time, a business relationship might become more of a personal friendship, or a personal friendship that was a business relationship might become more of an intimate relationship, meaning a lot of topics are freely discussed because of trust being totally earned, totally established, and totally enlisted by one or both parties. When that happens, it's a true love relationship. That love is not necessarily a burning hunk of love as we hear about in the Elvis Presley songs. It's just a love. And sometimes that love can move into passionate realms. And sometimes one side is just too stupid to recognize the value of friendship lifelong. Lifelong friendship is required for a coupleship to last. If they are not friends, if they can't lie to each with each other on a sofa or in a bed talking and cuddling and just having a good time carrying on and discussing life, discussing, discussing children, discussing plans, discussing proposals, discussing business, discussing opportunities, it's not really a quality relationship. You see, every relationship can easily slip to sex, but sex is not the only counter of a relationship. For some men and for some women, it is. It's their way of feeling whole, as if they can get somebody into them, then they feel like they've done something right. A player knows how to get a hot woman into him by just not playing right, by not acting like he's interested when he's actually interested. And that sort of makes the girl step up to work harder. But here's the deal. The girl doesn't usually do that unless she hasn't interested him intellectually, I feel. At the same time, she might just do that because she's needy for someone as handsome or as rugged or as robust or as tough as him. And that can be a risk to the girl because that is not a good quality relationship in God's house. I want people to really think about what makes a man today. Stupid little boys and ridiculous men will say a penis does that. And I can tell you that's not truthful. Because if that were the case, then many people who have lost their limbs or lost the ability to work themselves and function from the waist down would literally be dismissed by people. And yet we know that there are people of little stature and we know that there are people who've been through accidents and we know that there are people who've kept their love relationships with their sex partners or their wives or their intimate partners alive despite that loss. So we can't say that that's that, can we? It is certainly a difficulty that they have to overcome. But there are different ways, and we learned this from a William Hurt movie that was long ago. It was about a bunch of college friends, and at the moment, I can't think of it. It wasn't the Breakfast Club, but it was kind of a more mature version of that. Around the same 80s time, and it'll eventually come to me, but he was a dysfunctional disabled vet. And sometimes when people go abroad for war, sometimes they get held as prisoners of war. And a prisoner of war is someone who's been harmed by someone from a foreign land, a foreign culture, or a different type of thinking about the world. That is also a form of abuse. It is totally a form of torture when someone loses something so precious and so important as well as a special member of a human body. 
those things can come about in the concept of older age for many men over the age of 50, sometimes earlier than that if they played wrong in the world, called impotence. And that makes it sort of tough for intimacy between couples or even men who never found that relationship. Some men rush too quickly into a new relationship after the death of a spouse. Some men go off and take care of their first wife so they can have a second wife or a third wife or something else, and that is not anything other than promiscuous. A promiscuous man is always a promiscuous man, but a steadfast man is always a steadfast man. So when we talk about this in the ministry, when we discuss what is and isn't a man, we have to really establish that a real man does certain things. A real man is a man of character. A real man is a man of worth. A real man is someone who will actually wait a long time before he's trying to help you develop some new birth, if you catch my meaning. But if we talk about anything else, we can joke about a man, his size and his girth, but that is totally immoral, totally ill-willed, and totally unacceptable in a socially and politically correct world. I'm sure men like to check each other out, but I'm not one of those men. And I certainly don't want to be fondled in the middle of the night by anyone who has not been given my consent to touch me. It doesn't mean I'm not open to female touch. It just means that I better fucking want to do that with you. Otherwise, I'm going to be so fucking offended, I might just kill you. I have a life, and I have rules, rules for my life. I have goals for my life. And after I lost my life partner of 20-some years across two continents, I don't have to have someone trying to tell me what I can and can't do from my life at an age of now no longer 52. The truth is I turned 53 today, and my late spouse and late son are no longer here to celebrate with me. Otherwise, we'd be going to a movie like we always do, going out for some sort of lunch or supper and having a marvelous cake that my Japanese spouse would make. She would pick up the pieces where my late mother could no longer do that and create the orange or lemon cake that I'm accustomed to. It is truthful. I can put piddle myself and pedal myself and walk myself over to a Portillo's and receive a beautiful piece of lemon cake for my birthday. And maybe I'll do that a little later. But at the present moment, I'm living in somewhat abject poverty for a couple reasons. One, because someone decided to create a lie upon my name. And that lie was their thinking that they had the right to put information that was not plausibly their right in certain records. And those records were not established by me. You see, liars of the land walk into a home, open up bags that are locked, open up drawers, and start to steal information, steal property, and steal things for their children or for their own lives that is not proper in any concept of God. But what we know about the world today is that many people consider themselves to be atheist or agnostic, so that sort of allows them to walk themselves out of what is and isn't right for them to do today or any n given night. A person who claims they're not Christian is not going to impress anyone, and so is a person who is Christian is not going to impress anyone. You are totally evaluated, you are totally observed, you are totally judged by what you do. In the first impression, sometimes is true, but in the second and third impressions is what really considers and gives you your due.